A very interesting property of mesenchymal stem cells that we previously discussed here is their ability to modulate the immune system, which as you can imagine would be very useful in various autoimmune conditions, such as multiple sclerosis, which we talked about last time. Now we're going to talk about uh, mesenchymal stem cells in rheumatoid arthritis. How do you assess the possibility if a mesenchymal stem cell can actually do something in arthritis? Well, you need an animal model. And how you induce arthritis in an animal or a disease that resembles arthritis is by immunizing the mouse on day zero and on day 21 with collagen 2, type 2 collagen. This is a protein that's found in the joints. So when you immunize the mouse with this protein, by day 42, it develops a disease with joint pathology and inflammation and swelling that resembles the human rheumatoid arthritis. It's not a perfect model, obviously, but this is a model that was used to develop Remicade and other types of drugs that are used clinically for rheumatoid arthritis. So, what was done in this experiment was they injected, the authors injected, a 5 million allogenic, so from a different mouse strain, mesenchymal stem cells. And they injected it either at day 0 or at day 21. Day 0 is when the disease is first when the animal is first immunized, but it doesn't really resemble a human disease because in humans you already have the disease before you start getting treated. So they also did it at day 21. They met the mesenchymal stem cell injection. They measured the disease severity with a disease severity score from 0 to 4, 0 being no disease, 4 being very severe disease with permanent joint destruction and bone erosion. So. As you can see in the data, when you immunize the mice two times, day 0, day 21, sacrifice the day 42, don't give any cells, you see on average the disease is about 2.5. That's on the y-axis. When you look at the mice that received mesenchymal stem cells, at day 0 you see a profound inhibition of the disease severity score. You also see this inhibition if you give it a day 21, if you give the mesenchymal, if you wait, so day 21 and then give them, you also see inhibition. I like this experiment because they used a proper control. They used also uh, allogenic splenocytes, spleen cells, and as you can see, the spleen cells uh, did not inhibit the arthritis. Now, how could this be working? We said the cells in general inhibit, mesenchymal stem cells regulate or inhibit certain immune responses. So when you take the animals and collect the spleen cells. There's T cells in there that are fighting, well, that are activated against collagen, because you immunized with collagen, right? So if you can see in the figure here, the, um, the blue lines are the mice that were control treated, and the pink lines are the ones that received mesenchymal stem cells. And you can see there's a more inhibition in the um, mice that received mesenchymal stem cells, both when you activate with PHA, which is, which is antigen nonspecific, and also when you activate with the recall antigen, the um, collagen too. Now, another thing that was looked at here was TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. This is one of the inflammatory mediators that's involved in arthritis. This is what Remicade blocks and the different TNF inhibitors that are used clinically. And as you can see in this figure, TNF-alpha was suppressed, production of TNF-alpha was suppressed. So how could this be going on? What could be a mechanism? One idea is that T-regulatory cells may be increased. T-regulatory cells are your body's own, the immune system's own way to protect against very high immune responses. So we know T-regulatory cells are important because if you have animals who are prone to autoimmunity, if you deplete the T-regulatory cells, they get really bad autoimmunity. If you give them new T-regulatory cells, then autoimmunity is inhibited. So as you can see in this figure, there's an increased number on the, in the mice that received um, mesenchymal cells. There's an increased number of CD25 positive, CD27 positive, and then here on the next slide, FOXP3 expressing T-regulatory cells. So it seems like there's an increase in these quote-unquote good cells, or cells that can regulate the immune system, the T-regulatory cells. Now, are these cells actually doing anything? Um, so what the authors did was they immunized mice and got 
uh, and collected cells that recognize collagen, so the pathological T cells. And as you can see in this figure, when you just uh, culture the cells, there is not proliferation, the pathological cells. When you culture them in the presence of uh, collagen 2, there's a big increase in proliferation because these pathological cells are reacting against collagen 2. When you add T regulatory cells for mice that did not receive mesenchymal cells, there's a third bar here, you see an inhibition of proliferation, not a big one though. When you add T regulatory cells for mice that received mesenchymal cells, you see a big inhibition of proliferation, the last bar. So, in conclusion, it seems, at least in this animal model, that injection of mesenchymal stem cells inhibits pathology, inhibits secretion of inflammatory compounds, and also induces an upregulation of these T regulatory cells. So, what this means is if this kind of approach can be seen, if these kind of results can be seen in humans, it could be a very exciting way, not just to directly treat arthritis with mesenchymal stem cells, but also a combination with other types of agents that also increase T regulatory cells. And we will know the answers to these kind of questions actually pretty shortly because mesenchymal stem cells are already in phase three of clinical trials uh, by the company Osiris. And there's actual anticipation in the industry that they may be on the market in one to two years because the phase three data has, is, is uh, one indication is completed and in other indications it's ongoing. Thank you very much.